Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Don't Be a Man About It. Today, my guest, Sami Khoury, is the founder of Mind Resilience Training. Hi. Hi, thank you. My pleasure to be here. I'm excited to chat. Thank you. Before we, we you know, dig into the deeper stuff and the more serious stuff, uh, how is your heart doing today? How's my heart? My heart is, uh, my heart is great. You know, um, it's just really about especially with everything that's been going on the past couple of years, it's really just about taking things a day at a time, enjoying life, enjoying what you have. So mm -hmm. I'd say right now, things are pretty good. So if I were to, to re not rephrase, but just to head up, it would be mindful. Mindful at ease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Best state for a heart to be in. Who is Sammy? For sure. Who is Sammy? I mean, Sammy, like all of us, we are, we're many things. I, I'm a resilience trainer, mindset coach, mindfulness teacher, a founder. And what I do is I help teams and individuals become more resilient. Mm. And that means overcoming stress, anxiety, burnout, and doing that by maintaining your inner balance and your inner peace, no matter what happens around you. This is, this is what I do. <laughs> and how come, how come you chose uh, Mind Resilience? What brought you to this part of the world? Yeah, it really came out of my own journey with, with um, like after just, it came out of my own journey with the corporate and business world for so about 13 please, years. Let's about the journey. Let's, let's, let's go, Hickey, have a walk at, uh, in Sammy's journey. Yeah, for absolutely. For about 13 years, I worked in startup. I worked in nonprofit, corporate agency. I started my own social enterprise. And this, my roles were mainly in the area of business development and marketing. And what I realized was that for about 13 years, I was suffering. Mm -hmm. I was suffering from chronic anxiety, stress, feelings of low self-esteem, and that translated into other things such as anger, envy, uh, negativity, which of course created a ripple effect to so many areas of my life. The way I saw myself, the relationships that I had, my, um, my, my physical health, my, my, I had this infinite apathy towards work. I just didn't care about anything really. And no matter how well things turned out to be, I was never fulfilled. It's like I always had this gray cloud over my head, no matter where I went or what I did or how things turned out to be. Wow. And um, yeah. Yeah, Nev, you used two really big words, apathy and this gray cloud. Did it take you 13 years to reach that point while it was just gradually? It took me... It, it, was, it was throughout the 13 years and it came to a point where I realized that this is not a natural way to live. It's natural to experience anxiety and fear, but it's not natural to be enslaved to that anxiety and fear. Mm -hmm. So that's when I realized, okay, well, there's something that I need to work on in myself. And I've always been a student of self-development and personal development. And I felt that I needed something a bit deeper. So I dived into the more advanced fields of mindfulness, philosophy, neuroscience, psychology. And what I discovered that a lot of my suffering came from within. It came from how I was perceiving myself, how I was perceiving the world around me yeah. that a lot of the things that I was worried about and that I was concerned about a lot of them did not really exist in reality and so through that I was just able to heal myself and I thought wow you know this stuff about really how the human <laughs> world... sorry this stuff really works when we act oh yeah it's with our and it's so simple <laughs> and it's so simple it's it's really just about understanding how the human mind works, how the brain works, understanding human nature. And it's just now this is what I want to do. I want to share it with everyone and just in the hopes that they themselves can also build that inner resilience, build that inner balance 
no matter what life throws at us. That's very interesting uh, thing for you to say because you were open and coachable, whether it was yes. with yourself or with other people that you have worked with. A lot of men that I come across and I have a conversation with, they're either not coachable or they're scared to actually make that step. What would your, I don't want to say advice, but how do you help men to let their guards down, to actually mm. do something, yani, to, to, to let's say take that leap of faith when it comes to sitting with their emotions and fears eye to eye? Well, when it comes to a lot of men and women, the worst thing you can do is in, insult their intelligence. So you have to tread carefully to show them, okay, you know, there are some areas of your life that need improvement that you might not be aware of. And I say tread carefully because when insulting someone's intelligence is the worst thing that you can do. We are all a lot more sensitive than we appear when it comes to how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about our own brains. So it really comes down to asking very simple questions that, okay, what are you feeling? Why are you feeling this way? What did you do? How is that working out for you? How is that serving you? How is that helping you? Is this the first time that you feel this way, that you feel anger, that you feel uh, feelings of low self-esteem, you feel a lack of confidence? Where is this coming from? And when you ask questions, usually people will open up slowly, slowly. And I think that is a, a way to start where you just get them to, you just ask them questions and they you know, you show, you, they see that, okay, you know, this individual is interested in me and wants to learn about me. So I'll say a few, I'll say what's on my mind. Uh, so when you said people are interested in me and they want to listen to me, you reminded me of a very common statement, a very common statement that I receive from men, which is, wait, you know, I'm, I'm trusting you with, with things that I didn't even tell my wife. And they think that is a good thing. But when you hear it, especially from, from our industry, it's not a good thing for someone, regardless of the gender, not being able to open up and to be themselves with their significant partner. What do you think we as a culture, as a community, as a society, we should do to, to provide that safe space for men in specific? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the first thing is, is when you look at men, both in the Arab culture and even worldwide, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of men are attached to this alpha male persona, which means that I have to be the tough guy. I have to win at all costs. I have to show that I'm a man and that I have to do everything and save everyone and get the applause. Now, this, I mean, it does have its benefits because obviously we all have our duties. We all have our roles in life. We all need to put food on the table and, and support one another. But a lot of men, they take it to the extreme where they think that is the only thing that I have to do in life. And they, once they restrict themselves to this definition of what it means to be a man, this is what causes that suffering. And to your question, then they say, oh, but, you know, opening up and talking about my emotions and talking about how I feel, that's not manly. I'm just going to, to suck it up. Now, of course, there is no right or wrong. If you want to suck it up, you suck it up. But then the question is, no, yes, how does that affect your You don't want to send that, that message. <laughs> Sorry? We don't want to send that message. Don't suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> No, we don't, we don't want to suck, we don't want to send that message, but it's about this is what, what a lot of men think that I have to suck it up, but that's yeah. not always the answer, and it is doing more harm than good. That's, not just to, to the man himself, but to those who are around him. So tell me more about this alpha male and how could we contribute to, to, to the healing or to the improvement? It is so yeah, so again, well, what is the, the alpha male? It is this 
you know, uh, entitlement for, for no good reason. It's yeah. I have to win at all costs. I have to assert myself and even the most trivial matters. I have to be recognized for every little thing that I do. No matter where I walk, the world must roll the red carpet before my feet. This is um, some general characteristics of what it means to be an alpha male. Now, the way that you, you, you heal, like you said, is to show the harm that this attitude causes, not just to the man himself, but it's also causing harm to people around him, people in his workspace, people in his family, his friends, people that are strangers that he, he meets in life when, when going about his day-to-day -day activities. When you have this alpha male attitude, it really comes from a place, in my opinion, it mm -hmm. comes from a place of fear, which and is, is alpha I male have to... the same as uh, a narcissist? Um, I, think an, an, I think a narcissist is more so, there, there are overlaps. A narcissist is somebody who thinks the world revolves around me mm -hmm. and that everything has to go my way. And if it doesn't go my way, there's something wrong with the world. He's very good at <laughs> manipulating people to get what they want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And manipulation. Yeah, for sure. What I want to, to dive into more is, mm -hmm. is the role of partners or the role of uh, people around that alpha male to help him. I believe that for the most effective way possible is that he has to come to this conclusion on his own. Because if he doesn't come to this conclusion, he'll think, oh, well, you know, I'm all right. I don't need any help. Mm. What's wrong? What's wrong with me? Now, fine, maybe this individual, this man really believes, yeah, I don't need any help. But if you're harming people around you, that's also not a healthy way to live. So it does, this individual, he does have to come to this conclusion on his own somehow. And of course, his entourage, people around him, his family and friends, can bring something to light, which is, okay, so you acted this way, you said these things, you made these decisions, how did that make you feel? Did it serve you? Did it make you maintain your balance? Or were you just acting like a wild animal and, and harming yourself? So this is, this is where the, the people around him can play a role, is to ask simple questions and to not try not to preach so much mm. just ask simple questions and but these are not think, simple questions mm. are they they they're not simple questions they're deep questions but i think they can be positioned with simple words okay. you know what happened today oh you got angry what made you get angry mm -mm. okay uh, how else could you have reacted just short and sweet questions that could be without that, yeah without judgment, without trying to add your own flavors to the question, just very open-ended. And this individual, this man will come out with his own answers and he will discover things for himself. Again, it's not just with men, it can happen with men and women as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But we're, we're, we're just focused on men today. Yeah, um, yeah, true. <laughs> but what, what I wanted to see, because women do play a big role in supporting men or... Mm the opposite so how can a woman be it a wife a sister a mom whatever her role is in that man's life how could she be supportive how could she hold the space without taking things personal and i'm giving you questions from case studies and clients that i've worked with most women struggle to to hold that space because they take everything personal oh my god he got angry it has to to do with something i've said or done or he doesn't love me or you know what I mean? And at the same time, the man is actually going through his own struggle, but he's not talking about it. Yeah. So again, to, I mean, to this question of how do women handle a man who's going through struggles and not take it personally? First of all, they that's the answer is that they just simply should not take it personally. And how to do that is to really understand that people are what they are. Men are what they are. And I'm not saying that to uh, defend men who have unhealthy habits and behaviors. 
but to understand that these men are operating out of their own um, their own way of being, their own thinking. It actually has nothing to do with the woman. Even if that woman was not in this man's life, mm. this man would most likely be acting in the same manner. So the woman has to find a way to come to terms with the fact that, okay, it actually has nothing to do with me as his wife or his sister or partner or whatever. It actually has nothing to do with me. This is something that the woman has to understand. And when it comes to dealing with a man like that, again, it is, I mean, I might be uh, diving into relationship coaching, which I have no idea about, but I'm going to give my own two cents. It really is about a balance. It's about give and take. It's about sacrifice. It's okay. What am I willing to compromise? I know compromise has a bit of a negative connotation, but it's, it's <laughs> about, okay, what am I willing to let go? What am I willing um, to let my husband have his way on? Mm. So then the man feels, okay, at least I'm getting my way in, in X, Y, and Z. And then there are other things that the partner has to stand firm on. And also to explain why, to say, okay, this is something that I cannot change because it is important to me. It is important for my mental and physical health. And I also believe it is important for this marriage. And I mean, you asked about the woman and the woman has to have that confidence to be like, sorry, I'm not gonna budge on this. I've given you X, Y, and Z. You have to give me ABC. Again, might be getting into relationship coaching, but this is this is my my opinion. No, it's not just relationship coaching. I think this is something that we do come across every single day, Yanni, with friends, with colleagues, but it's more intimate with partners in a way that because there's no proper communication, because there is mm. no actual tools in hand to help them hold the space for men or vice versa. So what happens is that we see the middle a war of blaming and pointing fingers. You don't do this. You've, you never listened to me. You don't. Yeah. So it's really sad to see such, um, I don't want to say cases, but such situations to be in when the answer is so simple yet it requires so much effort, which is communicate and work on yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sammy, you did mention that throughout your journey, you went through a lot of feelings of anxiety and fear. What was mm -hmm. the, the second that you knew something has to change? The second that I knew something had to change. I mean, I don't know. I don't know when it happened, but I know that something came over me that, where I just had this insight where actually a lot of this anxiety and a lot of this feelings of low self-esteem and confidence, that's coming from a place of me, be, me trying to be something that I'm not. I was trying to be something outside of myself. I was creating a an imaginary benchmark in my mind of what it means to be a man, what it means to be successful, what it means to be an Arab man. And then I started uh, defining my life and putting conditions on my life based on this imaginary benchmark. And I just had this realization that that's why I was feeling all these inner struggles. This, this is where all this inner turmoil came from was because I was trying to compare myself or become this image of what I thought it meant to be, of what I thought it means to be a man. And that's when I realized, but that actually is irrational. There's no logic behind that. It doesn't make any sense. And I think that's when my journey started of really understanding myself, understanding my mind, understanding the human brain. Why do we... Uh, do this to ourselves because it's not unique to me many of us do this why why do we put ourselves in situations where we are living without uh, authenticity or we are living um, in a way that is not aligned with our natural selves and when you live in a way that is not aligned with your natural self there's there's a gap that's created a gap between your authentic self and a gap between your idealized self and the more you say, okay, this is what I need to be, this is what I need to be, the gap gets bigger. And when the gap gets bigger, so does the inner suffering. 
I mean, how can you live a life without being authentic to yourself as much as possible? What will happen to you? That's a big one. That is a big one. Uh, a lot of people until today, they, they still wear that mask. Uh, regardless of what that mask means to them. It could be strength, it could be a tough mask, it could be I am uh, the, the smart one, I am the protector, wh whatever that mask is, they still wear it, but it's so heavy. The heaviness of that mask later on becomes like an identity and then becomes an identity crisis and then it becomes uh, a baggage, then it explodes. And when it explodes, they would be, Oops, I don't know where that came from. Um, and it's sad. Absolutely, absolutely. And I love that you mentioned the word masks because that's what it is. And again, um, we have to say that there's nothing uh, inherently wrong with wearing masks because we have to wear masks in society. When we go about our day and we go about- yeah, Why do we have to? Why do we have to? That's a great question. I think. Well, number one, either you feel that um, you are too insecure to show your true self. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two is that there are, you know, let's say that you're, <laughs> let's say that you have a job interview and you are act you actually care about the job and you're actually excited for that job and you believe in that job. But maybe there are some things that you can't, you know, show about yourself. You say, you can't say, oh, you know, I like to um, hang around uh, in, my, in my dirty socks all day while I'm at home. <laughs> you can't say that in a job interview. You might turn off the interview like, what? Okay, you know, you have the skills and you have the passion, but that was weird what you said. So it's sometimes not putting that mask on is impractical and it doesn't allow you to get to, um, to achieve mm. certain things in life. But again, I mean, you raise an amazing point because... There's nothing wrong with wearing masks. Everyone wears a mask. But the problem happens like to, to, when you become I'm, identified I'm, yeah. with that mask, when you believe that you are the mask. And this is where the suffering happens. Hmm. Why? Because the mask is inherently a limited identity. It is a restricted way of being. And so you've kind of uh, hold yourself up into a way of being that is very limited. Mm. Speaking of you are the mask, I feel, I feel that when people really act from their true authentic self, and when I say authentic self, that means that I could love you so much and I could enjoy your company so much and value your time so much, but that doesn't mean that I have to be around you all the time. Just giving an example that setting boundaries in yeah. a way where, uh, let, let's give that job interview as an example. I once went to a job interview wearing a, um, a torn jeans, exposing all of my tattoos, even though I know that that company comes from a very corporate background. They just hire people with suits. And I was like, no, that's me. And that's who I am. You want to take me, you're going to take me from my mind. Um, it actually worked the reverse way. Like, we like your guts. We're going to hire you. And I was like, really? <laughs> what? Really? Totally. But it takes courage and it takes lots of burnt cheeks for you to actually make that decision that what's the worst thing that could happen. That decision on its own, many people are not doing it because they all, they're always scared of what could be on the other side. What would people think about me? Um, what would, I don't know, the, the perception might change. Some people would say, what would my kids think of me? And you have a daughter, a beautiful one. Yeah. So how could we be acting from an authentic self without wearing the mask so much or maybe finding the balance? You mentioned something about balance. Sure. So do you agree, with often, basically? So, Anna Aktira, I argue and debate, but do you agree with Yeah, that? yeah, no, I, I, that's great. Because these are all important questions and we have to explore them from different angles. And basically, see, I don't even want to use the word balance on this topic of authenticity because balance implies 50-50. 
Hmm. Uh, authentic 50% of the time than inauthentic the other 50% of the time. I don't even want to use the word balance. I, it, it is about, again, understanding yourself, understanding the yeah. life that you live in, understanding the country, the culture, the city that you live in. Again, we live in the Arab world. Mm-hmm. And living in the Arab world is different from living in, in right. other countries. Uh, you know, there are conservative elements. You cannot escape that. So there has to be an awareness and acceptance of the, the, um, the culture or the city that we live in. Mm-hmm. Then from there, you have to analyze, say, okay, you know, I guess when I go out to uh, my friend's place or I, can go, I, or I go to a party of friends and acquaintances, I can be a bit more a bit more loose and a bit more, um, you know, who, who, who I am. But then let's say that that's one context, but then there's a different context where, okay, you know, I'm trying to close this deal with, uh, with a big company, with a CEO. And, and I know that, okay, like you said, they're very, you know, may, maybe they're more, they have a certain way of being and they're like, okay, you know, we need to know that you're like us. Mm. So it depends. I mean, there has to be flexibility there. there you, you need flexibility in life. It, you cannot be, yeah. uh, you cannot be totally inflexible. And then at the same time, you cannot be so aloof. Mm. You have to kind of figure things out within each context. But again, when you talk about authenticity, it's understanding to what extent can I simply just be, be myself and let it all out without insulting other people, without offending others, but then again, you know, sometimes you can, of course, be like, you know what? I'm sorry if I offend you. That's just I'm me. Not. Or but then not. you have to I'm think, not yeah, apologize for being myself. If you got offended, that's on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's on you. <laughs> no. And, and, and I say that because there's another level that you mentioned, which is the fear, because the fear is essentially stopping you from being yourself. And when you understand that a lot of that fear is illusionary, a lot of that fear is a mirage, you are more likely to be your authentic self. That is the obstacle, is that imagined fear. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. All right. If you were to give three to four tips slash steps for how could an Arab man be more authentic with himself? To be more authentic with uh, himself, it's really about turning inwards and even looking to the past a bit, looking to when he was younger, to looking when he was in his youth. That's what were he things? has someone to work with, right? Sorry? That's assuming he has someone to work with. No, he doesn't. No, okay. he doesn't need someone to work with on this. He can simply look back at his own youth when he was a child and ask himself, okay, what was it that excited me? What was it that stimulated me uh, on its own? Mm. What was it that captured my interest and curiosity without mm. the influence of parents and other people? Yeah. What, what, what am I naturally excited about? And whether it, and that can be anything, there's no right or wrong. It can be art, it can be reading, it can be sports, it can be uh, going out into the desert. Then you embrace that, you embrace that authenticity and you integrate that into, into your life as much as you can. This is, I believe, a very healthy way of living because again, all of us, we have uh, many different energies within us. We have different desires. We have different drives within us and these energies and these drives, they have to be, um, they have to be executed in a healthy productive, practical way. Mm. So find, find out what it is that excites you, that pushes you and implement that in whatever area of your life. So get to know, basically explore yourself again. Explore yourself and accept yourself. Accept yourself. That's a good one. Yeah. My last question to you would be, because I'm very curious. Mm. You mentioned when we first met that you do your best as a, as a parent, as a father, to hold the space for your daughter. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I, I've always been a very observant person. I've always been very conscious about what's happening around me, what I'm seeing around me. And having a daughter, 
you know, obviously one day, inshallah, she's going to be a, uh, a woman who has her drive, who has her ambitions, who wants to get things done in life. And I noticed that a lot of women don't really embrace that. And my intuition tells me is that there is a fear to embrace these inner drives and these inner uh, ambitions in, in life. And when I look deeper into it, I believe that that fear was um, imposed on them at an early age, yeah. which is, you know, be careful, don't say this, Hi. don't do that, don't ruffle feathers, lower your voice. It was basically messages coming from outside of this young girl. So going back to the question about my daughter is, okay, well, I don't want that for her and I don't, you know, I don't want that for her. So that's why I give her the space to be herself as much as possible, to express herself as much as she, she can. So even when she screams and she shouts, I just leave her. I don't say anything, you know, and, and, and when she does something, I'll, you know, clap, be like, yeah, that's great, you know, keep at it. And um, it's basically avoiding suppressing things that don't need to be suppressed. Obviously, she's going to drink milk and spit it out on the floor. <laughs> I have to say something <laughs> in the right way. And he says, you say that in the right way, which is, Habibti, please don't do that. <laughs> as much as I can, <laughs> I, I maintain. I know, my I know. Patience. It requires lots of patience. And it does, yeah. You do that to yourself as well with your daughter, meaning if you felt the urge to cry, do you feel it's okay for you to cry in front of your daughter? I mean, I think it's okay to cry in front of my daughter. I haven't gotten there. Okay. But, uh, but yeah. Sadness, expressing tiredness, expressing these emotions that usually men do not do that in front of their kids. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, that's fine to, to express that in front of, in front of kids. Um, when my daughter feels that way, I tell her, it's like, it's okay. It's okay to be tired. But do it's you okay do that, that in front of her? It's, I, I tell her it's okay to feel these things and that, you know, I couple that with don't worry, everything's going to be fine. I mean, that's how I go about, mm. about things. Again, it does require patience. And of course, sometimes like a fuse within me erupts. I'm like, nah, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a journey. It's a practice. And there has to be that intention behind, behind it. Absolutely. What would be your last word or advice to men listening it is really to understand yourself and to be yourself and to accept yourself self-acceptance is the uh, the foundation of so many things in our journey to for, for in our journey of well-being and our journey of healing once you accept yourself as you are with all your strengths with all your flaws with all these um, things that are labeled as as uh, insecurities, once you accept that about yourself, you're bulletproof. Nobody can touch you. Why, why would you worry about anything else? Why would you be upset about anything if you are living according to your own values and you are living in a way that is virtuous? I love that. Be bulletproof. Accept yeah. yourselves. Love yourselves. And yeah. keep the curiosity on for you to be able to do all that exploring. Sammy, thank you yeah. so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And thank you for yeah. having me. This is fun.